What's up, friends? Today we are going to be ranking different reactor types to see which is the best, which we should build more of, which we should do research on. Let's get into it. First on our list, we have the molten salt reactor. Uh, now this is a reactor that got me interested in nuclear power. If you've heard of a thorium reactor, it's typically a molten salt reactor. So we got a uh, fuel that is dissolved in a hot salt uh, sloshing around and uh, hopefully being a very uh, efficient high temperature design that can be used for a lot of uh, cool chemical processes. However, there's still a lot of research to be done. We haven't been able to build one on a commercial scale yet. So um, as much as I love the molten salt reactor, uh, I got to I gotta see some proof. So I'm going to put it in the C tier for now. Next, we have the gas-cooled reactor. Uh, these were the reactors that powered the UK uh, for uh, the last 50-some you know, years. And uh, they only have six left. And they're all going to be shut down by 2030 uh, because they have this issue where uh, their graphite uh, moderated core, so they, they use graphite instead of water to slow the neutrons down, uh, it cracks and they can't totally predict that it's going to be hold its structural integrity for another 20 years or whatever like for u.s plants if they hit 40 and we're like wow this thing's doing great we can keep extending it uh, they can't say that with confidence for the gas cooled reactors so they're shutting them all down uh, by the end of this decade and for that reason uh, though they've performed well and the high temperatures are handy and it's and it's technically more efficient than a like light water reactor I'm gonna put them in the B tier all right next we have the light water reactor this is a picture of the new Vogel plant that's uh, being completed in Georgia um, so these I'm a little torn because as far as uh, global clean energy generation champions uh, they are S tier and we have learned how to run them so well over the years and they are you know currently the only uh, plant that's being built actively uh, play several different places at least full, only large scale plant um, but there are some high profile uh, overages in uh, schedule and cost at Vogel and we did have the the Three Mile Island and Fukushima accidents at light water reactors, though neither of those killed anybody, they were expensive uh, industrial accidents. Is it the light water reactor's fault necessarily? Not really. Uh, it's more of their, the, the way the safety system was engineered, but nonetheless, I'm gonna put them in the A tier. This one, we're gonna do the uh, sodium fast reactors. Uh, these got neutrons flying around. They can eat nuclear waste for breakfast. Uh, they uh, use a liquid sodium as, as their, their coolant and uh, solid fuel. Uh, we have a few of these uh, around the world. Uh, the U.S. had one called the EBR2 Experimental Breeder Reactor that ran wonderfully for about 30 plus years and even proved it could be it was meltdown proof they did a uh, test that where they got rid of all the cir circulation power and it just shut itself down from laws of physics and russia is working on commercializing it they have this picture is of the bn 800 a commercial sodium fast reactor um, so with that in mind i'm going to put this in the b tier uh, it's a good reactor we just need to scale it up make it more uh, cost effective all right, this is a real easy one. RBMK, that's the, that's the Chernobyl type reactor. If it didn't have that accident, I'd probably put it up more B or C tier. If it had containment, all those things, uh, because the other RBMKs that weren't Chernobyl ran pretty well, but just because Chernobyl happened, I'm sorry, RBMK, but you are a D tier reactor. And finally, we have our S tier reactor. For the S tier, I have chosen the Can Do. Uh, for one, it has one of the coolest names. You can do it! The name stands for Canada Deuterium Uranium, and that means that it uses heavy water instead of regular water. Because it does this, it enables them to run basically natural uranium right out of the ground uh, in their reactors instead of using enriched uranium like the light water reactors do. Uh, so that means you don't have to depend on another country uh, who has enrichment privileges to make some fuel for you. And that's a nice energy security freedom enabling factor that helps put them in the S tier. They've also had fantastic performance over the years. And recently, a few have been refurbished to show that they can, they can go even longer, uh, like our light water reactors, perhaps 
60, 80, 100 years. We'll see uh, if you keep swapping out parts. Uh, historically, they powered the fastest greenhouse gas reduction in North American history in Ontario, uh, providing the lion's share of power to get rid of coal. They've been fantastic. They are also perhaps a little bit easier to manufacture because they don't require heavy forging for the reactor pressure vessel. They, they have this very creative approach using these pressure tubes called calandria. Um, so lots of things to love about the can-do reactor, including all the amazing Canadians who helped design it and run it. As a, as a Minnesotan, I feel like I'm a, a close cousin uh, for, for Canada, and um, my American friends are going to give me some crap about this, but I call a spade a spade. Can-do S-tier reactor. All right, thanks for coming along. Hope you enjoyed this. Have a good rest of your day, and stay rad.